Doctor. We're talking with Rodney and Steve. Pauline Kale, the noted film critic, said the young actor chosen to play the lead in Superman is the best reason to see the movie. I've only seen excer excerpts from the picture, but from friends of mine who have seen it, they say it's a, it's a great picture and a lot of fun. This is the first appearance on The Tonight Show. Would you welcome, please, Christopher Reeve. Chris! <laughs> First of all, congratulations. It's, it's, a, it's a monumental hit, isn't it? Yes, thank God for that. But I gotta tell you something, there's something a little backwards about show business when you have to pay four fifty to see me fly around and a performance like that comes to you free of charge. I think that's just all I know. Rodney was Rodney was hot tonight. Wow. Hey, did I mean... you like my song? <laughs> 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 yeah, what's that? <laughs> He may be Superman, but he may be worth one shot. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I wasn't exactly throwing a frisbee around either. Out there, you know. Didn't you see Ed's commercial Sit in Mexico? Down. The man knows what he's talking about. He's Superman. <laughs> He has x-ray vision. He can see through your jokes. Oh. <laughs> oh, I suppose every time you appear someplace, Chris, people expect you to fly in or something and uh, do crazy things. What, what are the stock jokes now you get when people see you? Well, I was, what uh, am I wearing, I suppose? Uh, exactly. Well, I, I was on the Today Show yesterday morning at NBC, right. and then after I finished, someone said, would you please come down to do something on radio? And when I got there, I said, listen, I can repair the damage to the roof, no problem, you know? You had to come down through, through, stu through two studio floors right. and uh, that kind of stuff. If I ever get on an airplane, the steward says, thank God you're here in case we lose an engine, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know? I never get a break, but- You uh, know, there must have been a lot of actors who wanted this part because it was so highly touted and the whole, the whole picture with Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman and a lot right. of good people in this thing. There must have been a lot of guys who wanted it. How did it come about? Oh, they got desperate. I mean, you know, no, come on now. The I know that you had to, they wanted you to put on some weight. Yeah. No, they actually, on, on, on day one, they came to me with a complete set of false muscles. This little guy named Stuart Freeborn, who's one of the best makeup people in the business, he, uh, he came out and was holding a body stocking complete with fake shoulder pads and the whole thing. And I said, I, I said, listen, excuse me, but it's either me or the muscles, but not both of this, which is a bit tenuous because at that point they could ask me to split. Right. Uh, but... No, I just felt I'm trying to make him... I, I think it's a uh, story about a real man who flies. It would have looked a and, little uh, silly wearing a... Right, and you, can, you can't go with all that stuff. George Reeves did it in the 50s. Kirk Allen did it in the 40s. But uh, I thought, well, look, I'll go to the gym. And that was part of talking myself into playing the part is to have the physical size for it. Yeah. Now, the flying sequences, they say, are incredible and the special effects. But you had to you had to get involved yourself yes. in a lot of these, right? Not that you flew, of course, but right. did we you? had we had a flying. You didn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> See, I believe. I like to believe. I, right. I still believe in Clap Santa Claus and Peter Jack Pan. Frost and things yeah. like that. We uh, we had on uh, at Pinewood Studios in England. We had uh, a flying team called A Stage Airways, the only way to fly. And these guys, there were a hundred of them. Their job was to make one person look like he was flying. Right. And uh, we did it with the use of a lot of equipment that I don't really want to go into, but a videotape camera so that you could see what you were doing. And right. I could be, you know, 40 feet off the studio floor and stuff, but I could tell you what the weather was like and which direction I was going. And there's the Pepsi-Cola sign on the East River and there's 82nd Street, whatever. You know? I love watching the old reruns. Believe. I love watching the old reruns with George Reeves because they're so campy nowadays. <laughs> I and love the it. Times the, flying. the flying is wonderful because if he flew into a window, <laughs> He, he, he always jumped in, right? You know, exactly. and when he when he when he flew out the window, you can always see the the legs still kind of where he hit the mattress. You know, they just didn't quite disappear. Obviously, but God, they were fun to watch. Yeah, I I try to. Uh, a lot of people dream about flying. A lot of people fly today. It's a it's a it's a sort of a fantasy that many people right. have. And uh, this is a film that kind of had to wait for the technology to make it. Uh, only today, you know, do we have the kind of equipment that you can make this happen. In the fifties, he was stuck lying on a table with the. You know, the That's wind machines used going do, yeah. and the whole thing. But today, this is sort of, I, I looked at it as kind of modern dance in the sky. You know, that he can right. either be a human jet and go three times the speed of Concord, or he can go quite slowly and sort of um, and beautifully through the air in a scene that he takes Lois around the city. Yeah. You know? I understand it's funny. There's a lot of amusing things in the picture. Uh, didn't you used to play a heavy on yes. a soap opera? I used to play a guy named Ben Harper on a television show called Love, Love of Life. Life. He was a guy you love to hate. He was, oh, a tri trivia Life. contest winners for this year. That's, no. great, that's great training for actors. So yeah, I'll it tell is. you, working in those daytime uh, soaps. What I love is you learn your lines on the bus on the way to work in the morning, and when you get there, they say, okay, page two is out, and we're going to do that scene in the kitchen, and, uh, and then you tape in a half hour. 
And you just have to get it together, and it teaches you to improvise. And a lot I think of those shows fun. were live, were they not? Some no, of them? live on tape. You know, live on just tape. Just ahead of time. That's incredible. You know, they drink a lot of coffee in soap operas. You ever notice that? <laughs> yeah. And they what go they through a lot of doors, too. A lot of doors and a lot of kitchen scenes right. where they sit there and they say, tell me, Marge. Right. <laughs> and the camera comes in, then they cut to the other guy, and he drinks the coffee. Then the doorbell rings. What is it, Al? And yeah. they get up and they go, and the guy drinks some coffee at the door, and it's just to carry the dialogue along. I gotta, I gotta sell something here. We'll be right back. Right. Stay where you are. We got a film clip also from Superman. We're talking with uh, Christopher Reeve about Superman. When you actually you play, actually you're playing two roles, aren't you? You're right. playing Clark, Clark Kent, the mild-mannered reporter, and then Superman. Did you find it? Which part did you find the easier one to play? Because you've got to shade him a little bit differently. Oddly enough, uh, Clark Kent's a little bit easier, and I think I have sort of more affinity for him because he is closer to who we all really are. I mean, yeah. Superman is a kind of a fantasy, a dream symbol of ourselves, and Superman is a kind of a tongue-in-cheek appreciation of who we really are. I mean, right. when we want to go down, the elevator's going up, when, you know, things don't tend right. to work out, and I, I like that. That's easier to get into. Uh, Superman, there's a problem. There's no pockets in the costume. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you can't... You can't yeah, you know, and, and my so God... When you're I mean, standing around, you just... Uh, exactly, you know, what do you do? So you you're left standing, you have to case. do this, and you've got to do that, and, you know, there's, the repertoire is kind of limited, you know? What? Is it a one-piece, does Steve want to know? Uh, is it a one-piece? Well, it comes in several models, if you'd like to try. <laughs> <laughs> we can have you fitted right backstage. <laughs> exactly. Well, it takes two people. Superman doesn't go to the bathroom, don't you know that? Oh, God. <laughs> he wouldn't think of that. So mean. That's what makes him so mean. That's what makes him fly a lot. That's, that's, that's why he's faster than a speeding bullet most of the time. He has brown underwear, too. That's right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's show the film clip. Is it, does this need any setup at all? I, we're gonna see? I think what this is, is uh, Superman has dropped in a Lois Lane's apartment. My God, she must be being kept by Perry White. It's the best apartment you've ever seen in New York. Uh, and uh, they have a little chat. Okay, here's Superman talking with Lois Lane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Here's man. Superman. Superman. <laughs> See, they never brought that out in the comic books. No, they never no, got that sophisticated. No, that would have fogged up George Reed's glasses. Yeah, would have. Yes. <laughs> that's a. That's, that's going to. That's going to be a lot of fun making that He's picture. A rude young man. He's always funny. It's X-ray vision, not X-rated vision, so he doesn't go around uh, taking advantage of that. Yeah. Who is that? Mar Margot. Uh... That's Margot Kidder. Margot Kidder did it. And Gene Hackman is in it. And Gene Ma Hackman. Marlon Brando plays. Uh, Jor-el, uh, my your, father. Your father. Yeah. Now, from pl is it the planet Krypton, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what is the, the element that may give him the strength? I'm trying to remember. Well, basically, there are... Originally, in the old comic, there was a certain... Was it the Krypton itself mm -hmm. that... Uh... The guys from the comic books, from DC Comics, I went in there and said, listen, how would you like me to play the character, etc., etc." They could draw you a map of how to get to Krypton. You go to this galaxy and turn left and then right at the next light, and, you know. They've got this whole thing. It's total reality to them. It's not a, it's not a joke. Um, but uh, uh, the basic deal is that the red sun system of Krypton has different properties in the yellow sun system of Earth, therefore his molecular structure is of different course. and he's got powers. Now, in, in, the, in part two, the, the, the three guys that you saw, who, for those of you who've seen the movie, who are sort of imprisoned in the phantom zone at the beginning of the picture, they get out. When they come to Earth, it's three against one. So that's the, the hook for part two. Uh, I believe this. Yeah. I like this kind of stuff. <laughs> we'll take a break and uh, Susan Sarandon will be with us in a moment. Mm -hmm. 